We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to building the Affordaplane. Today we're going to start forming and creating the wing ribs. Now the good news is that this is not difficult and we're going to show you how we did it. There's basically three steps and if we master each of the three steps you'll be able to finish all 20 ribs in no time at all and they'll all look really nice. Now the strategy we took was we purchased 10 foot long half inch tubing. This is what our ribs are made out of, half inch by the 58 thousandths wall thickness. With a 10 foot length you can make two ribs very nicely with just a little bit left over. So in the first step we're going to cut the 10 foot length in half. However, it's not a normal straight cut. We're going to cut it in a way that it forms a very nice contour and fits our front two inch spar very nicely. The beauty of this is we're not going to use any plastic tips to attach it to the front spar. Rather we'll use some small metal gussets. But the key here is to have that front tip of the rib curved in such a way that it sets very nicely and very securely on the front spar. That's going to be the first step. The second step is going to be actually forming the curve of the rib. And with a couple of jigs, you'll see that this is very easy to do. And in our last step, step three, we're going to form the rear end of the rib and give it a nice contour so that it sits on the rear spar very nicely and then add a gusset. So to start off this process, I'm going to show you an overview very quickly of how Steve created his ribs. And then I'll go back and explain in more detail how we did each step. Now Steve was instrumental in getting the ribs created. He started off with a little help from Doug Smith. And yes, we're a fan of Doug out there who's uh, already built his ribs and his wings and his plane and whatnot. So we took some ideas from him and then extended them into the process which you're going to see us perform here to make these ribs. So let's watch Steve create his ribs. See it happen.
I just need a pair of So here is the drill jig for the front spar, the front of our ribs. We have a two inch circle here. This is where the saw is going to come down. And these blocks of wood are merely guiding the half inch tube along the path. And notice that the circle just touches the bottom of the tube. So when it slices the tube, we will get two parts. We will get two ribs. So of course, we're going to put a 10 footer exactly centered. So you want to mark the center of your 10 foot half inch tubing and place that center right here. Now this needs to be centered on our drill press. Get it centered right in there. And then we need to clamp it down to the press so that it does not move right in this position. We have our jig bolted to our drill platform. We have our sample tube marked with it centered and centered on the line right here. I'm going to block the end because I have such a short piece. Let's try it. This is what it left us with. We'll clean this up and let's test it out on our two inch spar. So here's the two pieces just slightly cleaned up on the scotch bright wheel. And note the very nice fit. This can go anywhere along the two inch spar and will fit very, very nicely. So this will allow us to use a metal gusset to attach to the spar and then to the tube. And the tube, because it has full contact with the rib, will make it nice and strong in all directions. So basically we're getting two ribs, two front noses for two ribs from each uh, piece of 10 foot stick. So the only thing left then will be to make the nose end for the rear end for the inch and a half spar, which is a slightly different radius. So step number two is to take one of the ribs that we cut the front nose on and insert it into our bending block number one with the nose all the way to the left and centered from up and down and we'll just push it down as far as it goes. This is of course just a stop to keep it from going too far, We're going to go right up to the edge there. And once that's in place, we're simply going to pull this down. I've also labeled this pull number one. As we pull it down, we're going to stop at this mark because this will complete pull number one. And then we'll remove it and take it for pull number two. And double checking that our nose is in properly, grab it up here and pull it down and stop at this mark and release. It will spring back. The next step is to come to block number two, bend, rib bending block number two 
And same thing, we're going to put our nose all the way down as far as it goes until it stops. And then we're going to do our second pull. Here's a close up of the nose. This just keeps it from going down too far. And now we're going to do our second pull, pull number two, down to this mark right here. And I'm going to pull at this point here. And then stop when I hit that mark. And release. It will spring back. Here's another view of that pull. I place our newly bent rib on top of block number one. I'm going to place it so the nose fits nicely on this tube. It's actually out of the slot, a little easier to manage. It's on the tube. And if we notice, it follows the curve, because this was the curve of the rib, and then ends up right on top of our rear spar. So, let's talk about what this rear circle is. This rear circle is our inch and a half rear spar, and I measured the distance between the front spar with a tape measure and the rear spar. And I moved this paper and taped it down. And notice this line is simply an inch up. That's because my front spar is an inch up from the bottom of the board. So my front spar and my rear spar are at the same level. And I measured on my wing the distance between the front spar and the rear spar, took that number and moved this paper so it matches. So this indicates my exact position of my distance between the front and rear spar, taped it down, and that way I can see where it lays, right on top. Now obviously our last step is to mark this where it should be and then uh, drill to get our curve so it fits on top nicely. Now obviously this will be straight up from the center of our rear spar. So I'm going to mark this tube. That's not a mark there, but I'm going to put a fresh mark right here. And when I take it over to my drilling jig, that's where it will put the center of that curve in so that that will sit nicely with a curve on top of the rear spar. So here's my mark centered on my rear spar and I also marked the very top. That way when I position this in my drilling jig I know that it is straight up. Let's go drill this for the rear spar. And now we're going to drill for the rear spar. Notice our bit is inch and a half just like the rear spar. I have the rib in place and as far as positioning, notice my mark is centered on where the bit will come down. And also note that my other mark is at the very top of the tube, so I know I have it rotationally correct. And I'm simply going to slowly drill down until the bit takes a chomp, a nice curved chomp out of this tube. There we go. Got to clean that up with a file. Putting it back on our number one board, we note that we got a very nice cut and how the contour sits very nicely for the rear. And as we come up to the front, this is how it will sit on the front. 
So this rib looks very nice and hopefully will fit the real thing. Let's go check it out. It's going to be tough to show both ends simultaneously, but this one will go right like this. And if I hold it here and we go look at the other end, here's another angle. And here's the rear one, how it sits. And these lend themselves to being secured with simple to make gussets that will hold them in place very securely now that they have a very nice footing on the front and rear spars. And there you have it. Now you know what it takes to bend these ribs. Not a difficult job at all. Probably the trickiest part for me was just making sure the whole saw didn't get stuck on the soft aluminum as we were drilling the tips. And of course, light pressure, relatively slow speed on those will go a long way. Just take your time. And after you create your first one, the next 19, go relatively fast. So next time we're going to be installing these using small metal gussets. Makes the job very easy and at that point you'll have a wing that looks like a wing. So the only way we're gonna make more progress is if everyone gets back to building. See you next time.